Welcome to this GiftWorks video. My name is Jonathan Lehman and this video is the second video in a five-part video series on GiftWorks Volunteers. GiftWorks Volunteers is an additional add-in that can be purchased and it works with any of the versions of the current GiftWorks fundraising software. So let's begin. I'm going to sign into GiftWorks and if you've installed the Volunteers add-in, you will have an additional option here on your toolbar called Volunteers. We'll click on that. We're going to into managing jobs. We already reviewed how you can um, set up your list of available volunteers. I'm going to show you how you can click on the manage jobs link, and you can you'll go to the manage jobs page where you can see the list of your uh, the jobs that you have available for for volunteers um, to help you with. Uh, this list can be again you can sort in the columns and search the list. It defaults to searching alphabetically by the name of the job. You can filter this list based on the project that you've assigned the jobs to. Uh, the manager that you've assigned the jobs to, or even the status of the jobs. The jobs can go through a status of open when you first open the jobs, filled when all the uh, positions are filled. Uh, you can inactivate jobs that are no longer uh, you don't you don't want available to assign volunteers to, and then a job can go will automatically close once you have all the assignments have been filled, and all those assignments are closed. We'll go through more of that in detail in future videos, but again, similar to the volunteer. Manage Volunteers page. You can click on any of these, and you can see information about the uh, the job, uh, and you can see history about the job. You can hover on some of these things to see different different information. You could click View here and actually view that job and do more information with do more work with that job. So it's kind of your starting starting point for for working with jobs. Gives you an overview of your jobs. So again. We we're an organization now, and we have a job available. We that we would like some help. We Availability for a volunteer to come and maybe help us some during during a week or whatever during some times during the week that they can help us with certain certain activities that we need help with the organization. So we'd begin that by adding clicking add a job. So we'd have you'd have the ability to specify we would need to specify the the name for the job. In this case, we have a position that's kind of sort of an office assistant position. We could use some help doing some office functions. We could put whatever description here we want to. We could say. Uh, you know, answering phone, filing, you know, whatever whatever would help us. When we click next, we specify how many positions we would have to fill. Um, in this case, we'd want to try to decide, well, you know, should, should this position be filled with one person, more than one person? In this case, if we, if we could find one person, uh, that would be great. Who could fill the whole time, the entire time? But we're thinking that's probably not likely. So maybe we would say we'll have two positions to fill. We can maybe ha maybe find two different people that could that could fill in the time. And you can adjust that number later. What project is this part? If you can set up different projects, they can be used in reporting to track track your jobs by project. In this case, it's part of our administrative operations project. And um, we're gonna we can pick somebody to, to manage this job, and this will be Marvin. Once you fill that in, we can click next. And when will this job start? We know that we're we're gonna st we're gonna need this uh, office help. We have uh, someone in the office who is going um, who who works with the organization who's going on maternity leave, and we know that we're gonna need help starting in in on on December first. So that's what we'll do, that will do. And um, if you know an end date, you can put an end date in there. If you do, you can leave it open ended. In this case, we know that um, it might be about a a three or four month period. So we're going to say for now, you know, if we could find somebody through April, that would be great. So, so we established the beginning date um, and the end date. And again, now we're going to be able to sp specify some specific time requirements for this job. Um, don't have to put this in. The more specific we can be here, the better it would help us in our matching process um, when we're trying to match up volunteers to, to this job. So in this case, we do know that we're basically going to need um about eight, eight hours a day and and our our offices are basically open um four days a week but and they're open from like nine to about four in the afternoon and we're open Monday through Thursday. So you can already see that um, we're, we're sort of building a, a profile of 
when we would need that help and, and we'd be able to match it up with the volunteers and see what times they would be available. In many cases, well, you can just click finish here if you want. In many cases, you might want to click add more details, which I'm going to do in this case. Add more details shows you the informa information we already entered. You can put any kind of additional notes or instructions that you would have that you think would be helpful to document here. You can hear, you can see here that you have this um, available, this um, the required times we would need help with. We can add additional time slots if we need. Maybe we need some time on, you know, a Saturday, if, depending what the what the job was. But in this case, that's going to be adequate. And we also have um, something very similar uh, to when we set up a volunteer profile, where we can specify the skills that are that are required. So this is the same list of skills that we talked about with volunteers. So when we set up a volunteer, we say what skills they have. When we set up a, a, a job, we say what skills are desired and what skills are required. I'm going to show that here. So you can see the job profile is kind of it really parallels the volunteer profile where you you put in your time frames and you put in your skills. So in reviewing the skills, you can see that in this description here that we have two levels of skills: skills that are desired and skills that are required. So you might have certain jobs that it'd be ideal if somebody could do a certain have a certain skill but wouldn't necessarily be required. There might be other skills that are absolutely required. So in this case, we're going to say that it really is required. Somebody has to be able to answer the phone because this is really somebody, this position is going to be somebody sitting at the front. Primarily they're going to be sitting and answering the phone. So they have to be, able to, to be able to answer the phone. It'd be nice if they could do some data entry or word processing in their free time. That's not required if somebody doesn't feel comfortable doing that. Uh, not required for this job, although it would be is desired. We really would need them to be able to do some sort of clerical work, so we'll make that required. Um, and again, we'd like them to do, be able to do some filing. And so we can look through this list and uh, see if there's anything else that applies. In this case, we think that's adequate, so we click Save. So we cl click Save. It brings us to the Job Details page, which uh, shows us the information that we entered. Okay, it shows you. It shows us. Um, in, color format um, shows us the, the the skills those that are required and those that are um, desired and we can see right now that nobody's been assigned to this job and zero of so zero of two assignments have been filled so we, see we set up a job we have the requirements for the job we have some volunteers out there um, but this job right now has not been filled um, I'm going to go over the settings area similar to what I did with the volunteer when I was showing you how to manage volunteers in another video we'll click settings we'll go uh, click more here under volunteers and again this is where you can set up the additional attributes uh, that you can specify for a job so here's when you can set up the projects that, that work for your organization you can add or remove projects here and you can same thing with the job managers again job managers very similar to volunteer managers um, are based on existing donors so you can add a, man a manager um, from an existing donor if that donor doesn't exist of course you can add that donor so again here's where you can manage um, um, work with your list of job managers. So let me click back on the, the the volunteer link. So now we basically set up our volunteers and we set up our jobs. In future videos we're going to show you how you can assign a volunteer to a job. Before you can assign any volunteer to a job though you need to, a volunteer needs to go through a screening process. Um, your organization may have specific um, rules or specific procedures on how detailed that screening is, that's of course up to your organization. But GiftWorks Volunteers is at least going to require you to acknowledge that you've gone through some sort of screening process, that this person, maybe you need to do a background check or whatever it is for your, organiza for your organization, but you're, you're going to need to acknowledge that. To do that, so you see right now in our, in our previous um, video in this series, we added Jackie Lehman as a volunteer. Uh, we added a volunteer profile for her, but she's on screen. So if you click on Jackie, you can see her profile. One of the options you can do, you can click Screen Volunteer up here, you can click Screen Volunteer here. We actually, I can show you that we could actually do it back in this page. We could right click and Screen Volunteer. There's lots of different ways you can get to that. So if I click Screen Volunteer, let me go in here so I can actually see the results of that. So I'll Screen Volunteer. Basically, you can say you went through this, this um, volunteer went through a screening process and they were either accepted or rejected. In this case, Jackie was accepted. You can specify what the screening date was, who screened the person. And you can put any comments in. Um, Jackie was referred by another organization. So you might just want to make that note. 
any notes you'd want to hear have here about the screening process and you click accepted so now Jackie would be a uh, available to be assigned to a job prior to that um, prior to that she would not have been available to be assigned to a job you can during that screening process you could have rejected um, if, if, if that person did not pass your screening process you could leave them in as a volunteer and you could leave them, them in a rejected status and you could maybe in the future go through the screening process again uh, but the important thing to understand here is that until a volunteer cannot be assigned to a job until they have been gone through the screening process so you see now that Jackie is available so the available statuses for a volunteer are um, on screen when they're first set up then when you screen them they become available if, if during the screening process we marked them rejected they, they would have been rejected and we could also at some point if a volunteer is no longer active we can uh, we could mark a volunteer as inactive we'll continue with this in further videos thank you for watching